Paleontologists seem to like the idea of the possibilities. Like most scientists uh, who work on dinosaurs, I'm probably a romantic and would love to believe in things like the Loch Ness Monster or the, uh, the Brontosaur in the Congo. But uh, until some hard evidence comes forth, it's very difficult to believe in it. It is possible that there is a dinosaur in the Congo. It is doubtful, that, extremely doubtful, that a dinosaur could be present in Loch Ness. I'm personally rather skeptical, but I would encourage anyone who wants to try, because in this attempt to understand, um, they are going to learn something, and so are we. If there are dinosaurs living today, they would be survivors of the extinction that has mystified scientists. There are many theories about their extinction. One is that the dinosaur's destiny was written in the sky. A cosmic shower of asteroids or a large meteor struck the Earth with an astounding impact. It created an impenetrable dust veil that blocked out the sun, killing off much of the plant life. An Earth robbed of the life-giving force of the sun, the theory holds, would soon be deprived of food for the plant-eating dinosaurs. Their passing would soon deprive the meat-eating giants of food. It was like a nuclear winter. The Earth suffered an untold loss of life. In a matter of months, the food chain would have broken down. The largest and the most dominant creatures on Earth perished. For the dinosaurs, it was the end of a 140 million year reign on Earth. Scientists agree that an asteroid killed the dinosaurs. Paleontologist Bob Bakker. We've had a nice explanation for dinosaur extinctions starting about a hundred years ago. It's simply that the whole landscape of the earth changed. That shallow seas drained off the continents, that the temperatures started getting colder in the winter, deep in land. And that animals that used to be living on separate continents now could mingle. And as they mingled, these foreign species brought in foreign diseases. And that combination, a change in climate and a mingling of foreign diseases, always causes extinction today. You can see it happening on every continent. And the end of the Cretaceous would have been no different. We don't need a cosmic zap. We have a nice, well-studied, earthly mechanism to kill off the dinosaurs. I think some scientists the majority of scientists uh, probably believe in gradual extinction of dinosaurs. But uh, there's certainly a growing amount of evidence suggesting that may have become extinct rapidly as well. I don't care what killed the dinosaurs. I, for me, it's very important to study and learn why the dinosaurs were so successful. Not all life on Earth was extinguished with the dinosaurs. The smaller animals emerged to fill the evolutionary niche left vacant by the demise of the dinosaur. Among them were those that dwelled in the trees and beneath the ground, like the mammal. There are 
are among us today animals that lived at the time of the dinosaurs. The crocodile, as a family, survived the extinction. They live among us today as smaller versions of the 50-foot giants they were 65 million years ago. Why they survived is still a mystery. It is the present-day birds, like this flightless ostrich, that may indeed be direct descendants of the dinosaur. Some leading scientists believe that birds are dinosaurs. Fossilized imprints of feathers confirm the surprising contention that through evolution, some dinosaurs developed feathers and hollow bones. This eventually enabled them to fly to safety and survival. How might the dinosaurs have evolved if they hadn't disappeared? Dr. Dale Russell has a theory. Dinosaurs were on the surface of our planet as the dominant forms of life on Earth for a very long period of time. And during that time, dinosaurs evolved. One of the most interesting evolutionary trends in dinosaurian history is a trend towards a larger brain size than some of the smaller flesh-eating forms. Had the dinosaurs not become extinct, then it is certain that they would have continued to evolve. And in the 65 million years that separates the end of the dinosaurs from ourselves, it is quite legitimate to speculate that some of the largest brain dinosaurs may have looked something like this creature here. Dr. Russell's dinosauroid has a hauntingly familiar look about him. His large brain, body, fingers, and his two legs mark him really as a dinosaur man. Dinosaur man. Well, I'm kind of glad I don't look like that. But I'm not so happy about the fact that they're gone. This is their legacy. This and the fantasy of the movies and television, toys, t-shirts. But really, the legacy goes beyond these things because dinosaurs teach us about evolution and about survival. And they challenge us to learn about their mysteries. We are, in fact, only on the threshold of knowing about these beasts. They're still locked in our imagination. They're not creatures from museums or fossil beds. They're made of more than rock and sand. They're eternal because they live in our imagination.